Hello everybody, my name is Nothing Extra. What we have here is a solar system orbit simulator. I'm going to show you how this thing, what this thing does. Okay, so first things first, this thing simulates the orbits of the solar system and it even has moons and, and all that cool stuff. We can speed up the time and see how Mercury orbits the sun. You can even hit the up arrow key to zoom out and see the whole solar system, including all the planets and some of the dwarf planets. And the cool thing about this is that this has elliptic, this calculates the elliptical orbits. So, so uh, yeah. And as you can see here, um, as you can see here, there is Sedna. We can click to track it and also decrease the speed that way it doesn't that the speed the sheer speed of this thing does not just uh, cause the thing to be decentered but we can stop time and select objects as well as zoom in on sedna right here so currently its speed is pretty high so let's zoom out max and figure out the orbit how far we are from the Perihelion. Okay, so now, right now, Sedna is moving towards the rest of the solar system, and it's going to do a gravity slingshot. As you can see here, we have, we have, uh, Sedna has made a orbital rotation. Now, if we hit space, we'll stop tracking, and we can also track other objects, including their moons. So, first, let's go to Mercury. Good old ordinary Mercury, nothing too special about Mercury here. And if we zoom in, we see Mercury uh, on its bright side. Even though I did not log in rotations into this program. Now we will switch to Venus. And here is good old ordinary Venus, looking like some other gas giant. And no moon whatsoever. And now we can switch to Earth and zoom in. As you can see here, we have the Earth and the moon. The moon revolves around the Earth, and you can see its front face since it's tightly locked. So that's how you see it whenever you see it in the sky. But you can also focus on the moon. We, uh, hang on. Here we go. So now we are focused on the moon orbiting around the Earth. We can also go to other planets like Mars, for instance. Except I didn't draw any moons on Mars since Phobos and Deimos are pretty tiny. We can zoom in on Ceres, which is halfway between Mars and Jupiter. And here's where the fun stuff begins. When we zoom in on Jupiter, we can see its system orbiting around Jupiter. We can see Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io is the closest moon. You can see how it orbits pretty close to Jupiter. Now the 78 major axis is pretty low. We can see, we can even focus on Io. See how, and to see how beautiful it is. We can also focus on Europa and zoom in. And you can see Jupiter here, here. We can zoom in on, we can also zoom in on Ganymede which is the largest moon in the solar system, and even as far as Callisto. And the thing about the first three moons, the first three Galilean moons of Jupiter is that they are locked in a in a one to two to four tidal resident, resonance, so that way they um, they meet, uh, the angle stays the game for, same for a certain number of orbits. 
And if we zoom out and go to the Saturn system, we can see the first three moons, which are, which is um, Mimas, which orbits really close to Saturn. We can go to, we can also go to um, Rhea, which or which is the second largest moon in the Saturn system. Titan, which is the largest moon in the Saturn system. And if we zoom out, uh, if we zoom out all the way, uh, if we zoom out of the Saturn system, we can see Phoebe, which is one of the one of the, the farthest orbiting moons of any planet. Um, of course, there's there are far even more moons that orbit far than Phoebe, but since Phoebe is the most relevant because of its size, it I decided to put that in. Next up, we have Uranus. If we zoom in on Uranus, we have both Oberon and Titania. And these moons were named after Shakespeare. And also, something I found out about Uranus is that the total mass of Uranus's moons combined is less than the than the than Neptune's moon of Triton. So Triton has more mass than all of Uranus's moons combined, and is slightly larger than Pluto. So if we zoom in to if we lock onto Triton, we can see it orbiting Neptune, the planet, the ocean planet. After that, we can also go to Pluto, and we can zoom in on Charon, and Charon orbits fairly close to Pluto, as we know it. We can go to Orcus, which, ha which has its moon Vanth. We can also go to Homia, except for Homia I didn't because uh, for Homia I didn't draw any moons because again the moons are really small. Go to Maki Maki and we zoom in and with its flattened flattened poles and white and uh, snowy mountains. And then Eris, which is the second, the dwarf line with the second farthest uh, helion, uh, apihelion. And we can see it's it and its moon, Dysnomia. And Eris is also the largest um, dwarf planet. We can also go to and its moon and its moon Waywood. And we can also go to Sedna again. Lonely, good old lonely Sedna away from the solar system. And we can even we can even speed this up to see just to show you how how Sedna orbits the solar system with its highly elliptical orbit. So around here is its perihelion relative to the sun. So if we zoom in so if we zoom in max onto Sedna and we speed it up to to eight it's still on screen. And if we zoom in to however we zoom into Mercury, then and speed it up. Um, it exits the it can exit the screen at about seven. So that proves how how planets orbiting further away from the sun are slower relative to the sun. Anyway, I th anyway, I think the simulation is cool, and I used. Kepler's laws and equations for orbiting stuff based on the semi-major axis, semi-minor axis. I also 
I also calculated the semi semi minor axis for some of the planets since they weren't listed on Wikipedia. But uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll post a video on my educational channel. Bye.